Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Ross of the guy with the eye here. And I don't have this on my computer, but luckily I have a couple higher up friends, not higher ups, or you know, per se, sorry if you're watching this, but uh, beta testers and they do some things with Apple and everything like that. And they have the photos that is coming out this spring, you know, as it even says on the Apple's website. And I was able to mess with it. Unfortunately, you know, mess around and play with it really quickly, uh, you know, for just a couple minutes just to kind of see this experience because it's in beta and everything. Fortunately, my friends didn't have um, video like uh, recording like I can do on this computer here, but I can just tell you my experiences with it. I'll go down the Apple website and just show you some things and just how things work and everything like that and really how it's framed it's interesting how apple is trying to do this as a as they say right here a photo collection it's not an editing program that they say it's not replacing uh you know iphoto necessarily it's not replacing aperture it's not an aperture replacement it's a whole new experience so let's just talk about this it's something interesting this will be out and i'm sure a lot of the other beta testers out there who have way more knowledge than me about this it's just my first thoughts about everything after messing with it uh, really quickly because I come from a Lightroom and mainly Photoshop background. So it's interesting to see. So let's dive into this. And if you guys have tested this as well, please let me know down in the comments your thoughts, uh, you know, until they make some changes. Let's dive into this right about now. So now more or less recently, Apple did away with Aperture. They said they wanted to go a whole different route, a whole different experience, got it uh, to get away with the iPhoto and everything like that. So that's why we're going to be seeing in Yosemite 10.10.3 uh, this spring. It's going to be a free upgrade for any anyone you know who who can do this or whose computers can handle that. And this is the new experience you're going to get. So you're not going to have your, uh, you're not going to have all that experience. You're going to have this new app, and this is going to be the new editing program. So if you're coming from Aperture, if you're coming to this, and maybe from the Lightroom or whatever, uh, or whatever transition you're going to make, they're saying that those old files that you have, those Aperture files or anything like that, will come over. And I saw that tested, and they do. But the problem is there can be some missing information as it's a completely new system. So my first thoughts as uh, mentioning this is it's a very, very different experience. It just has a couple tabs and everything like that. And the collections thing really kind of reminds you of, you know, what you have on your iPhone with the iOS 8 and the collections. But like with this, you can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you see the thumbnails. Okay, something like this. This is a little better. Uh, and that's not something you could do before. Uh, I wasn't a fan of iPhoto and Aperture before. It just really didn't look well, but it has the same Yosemite blend as you're going through this. So it, it sh you should see a flawless, essentially, uh, transition if you're going from that. But in regards to, uh, you know, photography, so, so, so as I said, this is a free upgrade. And typically when you have an iCloud, so all of this is going to be iCloud based, it's Apple. So that's how they do it. You typically get five gigabytes free. Now, the thing is when you do your editing, when you start using this a lot and everything, and you start importing and syncing to your devices and all this kind of stuff, all the movies, videos, that five gigabytes goes so quickly. So you can always upgrade. So they have options for an extra dollar a month you get 20 gigabytes which seems like a lot but once again if you're using this as a main platform to edit and sync and back up to the cloud it this can really add up uh for 20 gigabytes uh for 200 gigabytes it's four extra dollars a month for uh ten dollars a month you get 500 gigabytes and for twenty dollars you get an extra terabyte a month so if you don't mind paying that fee then that's not bad but my thing is if this is a free thing you're going to need the storage and that's how they're going to kind of get you with this. And essentially they're competing with Adobe uh, creative cloud, which is a subscription based system. And, you know, in regards to photography, Lightroom, you know, that kind of, uh, that kind of genre, um, you're not worried about space more or less your own space on your own hard drives that you already have. But I mean, if you add up $10 a month, $20 a month, um, it's, you're going to essentially almost be paying more because Adobe CC is uh, ten dollars a month for a Photoshop and Lightroom bundle. So keep that in mind. Yes, this is free, but it's not necessarily free because a lot of people use their iCloud. And you know, as I said, for four and a po people will probably want to go with the ten bucks thing. So that's what you're kind of competing on in that basis. But let me tell you that it was actually not a bad photo editing system. One of the cool things I said, since it uses the iCloud, you can have your iPhone hooked up 
and it will look really, it, it syncs really, really quickly. We, you know, in under 30 seconds, any new changes you make automatically get done and you can see them pretty much live time. Uh, some of the other things that I uh, necessarily, you know, didn't like 100% is that, um, you know, you can share it to social platforms, but there's no syncing to social platforms. Um, and this isn't a big deal for me, but there's no geotagging and everything like that. And then they're trying to say that this new feature in regards to photo editing, it, this auto crop to determine the horizon and everything like that. Well, if you try to go fully auto, first of all, if you're, if you're working in editing, you should do your best, um, to get away from auto settings, to get a proper adjustment on things, to get, you know, just the best image that you can. As you can see right here, that's why I chose this screen. Um, you can go in and see all the different, you know, changes. And it's all the basic stuff. You're not going to do, you know, they have some little heel icons and stuff like that. But you, you're not going to do anything too specific, you know. It does what it needs to do on a basic level. Uh, you... I mean, as you see, like, it's, it's just hard to describe this. It's just like, it doesn't do a ton more. Uh, I think it's a little more, I think it's a little less than Aperture in uh, in all regards. But other than that, uh, you know, you're going to get what you can get from a free editing program. But once again, is it necessarily free? But you can do what you need. The heel icon worked a little bit, but it's definitely not as strong as like a... Like a, like a content aware type issue. If you're trying to make big changes, smaller changes, it worked really, really well, especially with skin tones and everything. But going past that really wasn't uh, one of the best options uh, to do that. And essentially, this is just, as like I said, this is going to be a, a sharing platform. And my overall experience was that it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It's not like you, because this is going to be free. You don't need a subscription uh, to do this. And if you're not, you know, using the iCloud and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, this is a great option. You know, you can edit an image. Can you go really far in depth? No. Couldn't do that before with Aperture, in my opinion. Um, you know, to make really different changes, drastic changes. But to do what you need to do, it's it's not a bad choice whatsoever. So now that they're really, as I said, they're trying to do this as a really big system, this big collection. They're going to, they're, Apple's trying to push uh, things to buy prints and everything. I didn't really see this 100%, uh, but uh, but I was being told about it. And, you know, you can read it here. I'll even link the Apple's uh, preview down in the description below. So that way you can look into this a lot more, even though you kind of saw this. Um, but they're, they're offering photo books and prints and everything, you know, from your iCloud. And then you can send them and all that, you know, kind of uh, fun stuff. And they'll auto do it and all this kind of stuff. So overall, this, it's, it's an interesting approach it looks great its functionality is pretty good uh you can edit a photo but you can't really edit a photo um but you could do all the basic stuff you need you don't have to be a you know an editing master to enjoy this or to to hate on this or whatever it wasn't a bad editing program regards from the photo standpoint but you know if you're a big iCloud user it's not necessarily free you're gonna to have to pay some certain fee as i said that kind of contradicts to what how they're saying it's free but with adobe cc so that was kind of a quick rundown but as i said i just wanted to talk about this as i said this is coming out in the spring uh it's an interesting new feature that when you upgrade to osx uh 10.10.3 uh for free everyone will be able to experience this and you can go from here so even if you have photoshop lightroom check it out you know if obviously you're a mac user and see if you like it or not obviously i'm going to keep using photoshop even though i'll get this you know but that's how it is and any beta t uh, beta testers if you guys uh, and girls please let me know your thoughts down below i know a couple watch the channel and it's just interesting to see this whole thing together uh and how it works together it's pretty flawless uh it just took a while to get there but the editing program still isn't for me. I need something a little more vast and a little more in depth. As I said, for the basic editor, for your basic thing, you know, for hobbyist amateurs, it's not a bad choice. You could do a lot of what you need for free, essentially. That's all I got. Eric Ross to the Eye. Have a good one.